Hello everybody, my name is Deku Games, and welcome to my uh, episode 6 review of the Fallout TV show. This is the most controversial episode yet! Not to me, because it makes sense. Uh, let's get right into it. I love how Howard is like, really is the intro to this one, and that he's doing more and more ads and everything, and he's really getting into stuff. Um, and then he's like, he's walking around, talking about the vault and everything. I thought that was really cool. Um, getting to see like an actual advertisement, live action advertisement for vault tech. I thought that was awesome. Um, and then obviously you, he says the line, keep the rads out and keep the rads out and everything like that. And then he says a really funny line of being like, so we can protect the working man. Uh, I thought that that's so funny. I thought that was so funny because obviously, if you know anything, um, the whole idea behind Reds and communism is working man and the working class and everything like that. But then again, propaganda twists that and is like, oh, well, no iPhone and all this other shit and like starving. Uh, so it's really interesting <laughs> to see that they're like, oh, we're about the working man, but we will own you. <laughs> we're about the working man, but you will never own capital <laughs> and all this other shit. I thought, I thought it was really, really funny um, that that's, it's on the nose, but also tactful too. Um, and it makes sense because obviously Fallout, it's about the Red Scare. That's what it's about. It's about 60s and Americana and all this other stuff and then the Red Scare. So I think it's really cool. Uh, then we get to see Cogsworth VA. It didn't need to be in there. It, like, the VA didn't need to be there, but I thought it was really funny to see the scenes of him talking to, like, the uh, the, the waiters uh, and everything, <laughs> and then being blown off by them. Um, but then also, he plays really well into the ideas of the show, because he's like, oh, don't tell me you're all oh, this radicalization in Hollywood and everything, and as if Hollywood... I mean, Hollywood has always been a really nuanced idea i mean a lot of them is are just a bunch of fucking rich people but at the same time hollywood is also the place for creatives and everything like that like uh you know filmmakers and so on but then again hollywood was a corporatization of it and everything like that but anyway um i, I find uh i find like howie being just so livid at everything so funny because <laughs> like at one point he's he's mad at vault tech he's like god damn it these stupid fucking ceos and everything but then he later i'm going to get to his friend later but then his friend's like yeah dude these ceos they're controlling us right like oh my god the system is it's rotten to the core and sure i might have money and everything but he's like yeah i hate it but i'm not a communist it's it's so funny um but obviously then the Cogsworth voice actor talks about how they are products and they are to be bought and sold and to buy and sell things you need to create problems and they fit those problems and fix those problems and all that other stuff and it's a really good critique on consumerism and all that other stuff. Um, it's really funny about how they're talking about destroying businesses in that same conversation um, but – a few lines before talk about how uh vault tech bought out roboco as if that's not destroying a business as if uh <laughs> a bigger business buying out another smaller business uh isn't this destroying it because you're just going to get rid of everybody and if it's not profitable you already have everything you can then sell it at your own price and everything like that and again this has continued throughout the entire episode and obviously it's controversial People are talking about it like it's again, it's the Red Scare all over again. There's a new Red Scare going through in our current times. Uh, and it's really interesting to see that Fallout, again, is critiquing that. Uh, and it surprises me that they're even going into this, right? I figured that going into this, I would like it, but I wouldn't like it as much as I am. Because uh, I thought, thought it was just going to be, you know, the aesthetic. It was just going to be the, oh, funny, ha, 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 look, it's accurate to the games, here's some lore, here's some other stuff, it's some good writing, but it's not the best. But actually going in and diving into the themes is something that I didn't expect from the Fallout, especially under Bethesda Microsoft, right? I figured that any new project 
uh, with Fallout was just going to be a whitewashed version of everything like that. Yes, it would be leaning into those directions, but it would never, it'd always be fence sitting, right? It would never be trying to say something. Uh, nor would it be trying to say something as nuanced as something like New Vegas was, where it was offering up multiple different viewpoints and everything like that. It was trying to let you, the player, decide on everything while also clearly saying who the good guys were. Um, but other than that, I love it. Uh, <laughs> uh, we cut back to Fault 4. And at first, I have it right here that I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. What is this? Is this the Fallout Shelter Vault? Because, you know, they're bringing people in and everything. And if you've played that game, you know that that's the whole point. And no, obviously it's not. But I write these notes as I go. Uh, I don't do it afterwards. So these are just my thoughts as I'm doing them. And here's one of the other most controversial parts of it that if you think about it for more than like five seconds makes sense. Especially if you've watched the entire show up till now. Makes sense. And that's the use my cock line. Um, duh. Of course he said that. He's a brother of Steel Dude that was raised by the age of nine. Later on says and had no sex education. Nothing other than that is running on pure hormones. And then, but is also shot with a rotten tooth. And is infected. And it's going to his head. So, of course, he's going to be weird. Also, they're both weird. They are both really, really, really weird. They're awkward. They don't. They are just saying the weirdest shit ever. Lucy is just being this, like, weird, overly toxically polite person. And then Max is just this weirdly blunt dude, right? Two opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, sugar bombs were really cool to see. I thought that was awesome. Uh, mutants were also really cool to see. Obviously, that, those were in the trailer, but seeing a few of them, including... It is Nuka-Cola Quantum that turns your eyes blue, right? No, that, no, that's Spice Melange, but, you know. Uh, I thought that was really cool. Um, then we cut back to the past, and, uh, they're in the hot tub talking, uh, drinking gin martinis, and he mentions Bakersfield. Now, this could be a reference to anything, but... I'm going to personally take it as a reference to Fallout Bakersfield, uh, which is a, um, like, Doom shooter-esque Fallout thing, um, Fallout game where it's kind of, it's pixelated like OG Doom and everything, and I thought that always looked really cool, and it's always been on my radar, and I know that it's a reference to something else, but I just wanted to take that moment to talk about that mod. Um, and then his wife, again, I'm horrible with names, uh... Talks about good vaults, and Howard is like, what do you mean by that? And she doesn't explain, and then they get mad and everything, and then he goes off to the bar, and uh, he meets with this native friend, who I, again, forgot, but I thought it was really cool having a little bit of inclusion, but also having it play into the show, because, well, he talks about how I'm, quote-unquote, the stereotypical Indian man that you just shoot at the end of the film, and that makes me really wonder, like, yeah, there is, obviously, there's a ton of racism in Fallout. Like, it's even in the games. Yeah, there are some problematic stuff in the games themselves. But, like, it even talks and goes on racism, right? With xenophobia of China and racism of other types, such as with ghouls as analogs for marginalized groups. And other things like that are, are mutants and so on. And new races against things like like super mutants and so on and and the games it teaches and talks about and expounds about how racism is just fucking a stupid idea um but yeah he's uh i really enjoy how he's like well you're an actor you're paid tremendously you have a ranch you have a bunch of acres and everything okay just because you are doing well doesn't mean that what's going on isn't a horrible it, that's like being like, yeah, I got paid like $250, but I still had to shoot somebody for it. Well, I mean, that's just how the world is. Yeah, but I still shot somebody for it. <laughs> uh, this that entire, that dude's entire like speech about uh, corporations and everything was just based as fuck. It, 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 it honestly was. Um, he saw me like, well, all they're doing is about making sure their shareholder profits are up and everything and making money. It's like, well, that's just how capitalism is. And 
yeah, it is. That's how it is. Uh, and a little side tangent. People always talk about it like, oh, it's not working. Yeah, it is working. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to build wealth. That's the whole point. It works by you not getting that wealth. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think that the entire like idea of how they're presenting both the ideas of critiques of capitalism and then also how they're showing communism is really interesting. It's tactful. It doesn't feel like it's all on a soapbox. And it's also doing some critiquing at the same time. I will get to this a little later. Um, but even if... There are characters who are in this show that are communist and they turn out to be bad. This is not the show saying that, oh, they're all bad or so on and so forth. It could very well just be a fall from grace. It could very well just be a person that was good, turned bad, so on and so forth. It could be anything. It genuinely could be. Hell, it could be a false labor situation with fucking Nazis being called socialists. Despite the first thing they did whenever they got into power was burn the socialist part of parliament. Um, but again, that's for later. Let's keep going. Uh, I really enjoyed the cult stuff with Vault 4. I thought that was really interesting. And what does this say? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he's talking about like... He's like, oh, it sounds like you're in a cult. And obviously, that's a lot, something a lot of people say. Um, but then it's really funny that it's paralleled by Howard coming home to a dog named Roosevelt and his little daughter reading Little House on the Prairie while doing everything about the American dream, right? While it's still not being truthful for him. Like, yeah, he's an actor, but he's still a part of the working class. He's still the proletariat. And everything like that. He's never. He doesn't own capital. He doesn't do any of that. Yeah, he makes a lot of money, but that's not directly from the system that he's defending, right? Um, so I thought that was really interesting. And yeah, there are some things, you know, cult of personality and everything like that. But it's always nuanced situations. And again, such as with this about how even this dude... There is more to it than just he's a blind follower of the American way of everything like that. He starts questioning it and everything like that. Um, yeah, freedom being taken away and everything. And he starts like to realize that this really isn't freedom because it's not. They say that you have freedom, but fucking everywhere else on Earth does. We're just the only place that says that we do. And yeah, hold on. You typing in the comments right now saying, oh my god, this is some radicalized bullshit. Holy shit, you're so woke. Duh! But, two. Yes, I understand that there are places on Earth that are worse than America. I get it. I understand that. I know why people move from other countries to here. Because it's marginally better. That does not mean the shit going on here isn't fucked. Wow, crazy. Shit can have nuance. Uh, also, 99% of the time, the people coming from those other countries are destabilized from America anyway. You can't really deny that. It's rather or not you enjoy or say that it, that's right or not. Uh, it's not. But anyway, back to this. Uh, I really enjoy that both the husband and wife are just being fed a line of bullshit. Like, they're both fighting, but like, they're both fuck fuck me like they're like we're gonna worry about freedom and you know the american way and then his wife's like and i gotta be i got but vault text the future and like obviously she's pretending to protect the kids and everything and that's good but like blindly following vault tech and it's so funny that they're just like both being fed lines of propaganda and it's really interesting um also back to the future um, we're in the vault four again, and we're talking about, uh, the overseer is, like, this weirdly racist dude that's, like, <laughs> he has this, like, weirdly, like, I want to use both these words, and this isn't what that is, but it's to per best describe what's going on. He's, like, liberal, wanting to, like, you know, being inclusive and everything. But he also has this, like, weird conservatism of, like, keeping the past in intact, right? He's like, I can't save surfies anymore. And I just thought it was, like, really funny. Uh, 
And then there is the entire thing of... Um, hold on. I, I switched to a different pin whenever I was using this. Yeah, there's like... It's, it's, um, it's really cool just to see like how different vaults act and everything. And all that. And it is a bit culty. It really is. That was what I was thinking before it was revealed. And then we get some more uh, clean water and clean showers and everything like that. And we get to see, like, Max uh, messing with it. And I always think it's really cool whenever we see uh, Apocalypse dudes. It was really done really well in uh, The Walking Dead whenever the crew first got to uh, Alexandria. And they were just, like, season five and, like... They're, like, experiencing hot showers for the first time again and, like, soap and Michonne doing toothpaste and everything like that. I thought that was – I think it's always really fun. And seeing Max, you know, being like, soap, whoa, despite the fact that it's weird that if – if that's his first time seeing soap, it's really weird that the Brotherhood doesn't have soap because soap has been around for a long time and is incredibly easy to make. Like – even as far back as the Middle Ages and before, and um, even its first inventions back during, oh, what was it? Was it the River Valley? Uh, one of the one of the early early um, uh, like African, near African, Middle Eastern like civilizations, they like made soap, and it's really easy because it's just rendered fat and other things like that. Uh, and obviously, famously, uh, Christian. Which is one of the things that the Brotherhood of Steel is kind of taking visual influences from with monks, knights, so on and so forth. Um, is that Christian monks are known for making soap and having guilds for making soap. So, it's a little weird if he if he's never experienced that before, but it's the wasteland. People are dirty. So, eh. uh, Ah, and then here is the biggest controversy of the entire show. And that is the retconning of new vegas and the ncr with shady sands i don't have to tell you guys it makes sense it does it doesn't retcon anything it doesn't do anything it doesn't get rid of your favorite game which you could still go back and play anyway and if you're crying about it you can just go back and do it and most of the people crying about this hated the show anyway and hated fallout 4 and hates Bethesda and everything like that. I mean, obviously there are fair critiques of Bethesda anyway. Um, and all this other stuff. But this isn't something to get mad at. It makes sense. The show takes place in 2296. Fallout New Vegas takes place in 2281. I had to look this up and make sure. And, I, and yes, this is correct. But remember, on the timeline, it talks about the fall of shady sands in 2077 or 2277 and then arrow next in line next in the timeline nuke not given a date but the nuke did not happen in 20 2277 if it would if it did max would be fucking old as shit uh and two it wouldn't line up but everything that the timeline tells us it does line up, and it makes sense because in New Vegas, we are told that the NCR by 20, 2281 is stretched thin. Resources are running low and everything like that. And speaking of New Vegas, New Vegas takes a lot of stuff from Roman culture with the legionaries and the legion and everything like that and Caesar. And one of the most famous things about Rome is the fall of Rome. Rome did not fall and so on. It is a time period called the fall of Rome. And clearly that's what the show is taking inspiration from. They are using that term, the fall of, to represent a overarching time period to reference a prospering civilization eventually collapsing, aka the fall of Shady Sands or the fall of Rome. Pretty simple if you think about it for more than five minutes or five seconds. Because I could come up with all this and think about it for a little under five minutes, and it all made sense. Uh, and also, also, the nuke was the the you know final hay bale that crushed the camel's back and everything like that, right? 
uh, and caused the fall and everything like that. And by now, in 2296, uh, the NCR is no more. People are really mad about this, even if they understand it. I want to defend it really quickly. It makes sense. The really unique thing about Fallout is the fact that it's not just apocalypse. There's always civilizations that are prospering. But even as far back as the early games, these civilizations, yes, are pretty encompassing. But at the same time, they always fall. Look at the Legion. Look at the NCR in New Vegas. Look at the Strip. Look at all this other stuff. The Strip is an entire city. An entire working city. But even then, we still as a player have a choice to make it fall. That's been an overarching theme of the of the wasteland forever. And even as far back as Shady Sands and the early games, it wasn't the best of like civilizations anyway. They were living in, like, concrete huts and everything like that. Which, yeah, is impressive for that time period uh, and in the post-apocalypse. But still, that's not going to last unless you have proper infrastructure and so on. And they were stretched thin. They were from the entire New California Republic, stretched up to Oregon and went into Nevada. Yeah, if you have, like, Shady Sands had 30,000 people in it. Even then, it's it's going to continue and it's going to stretch thin because there is no, like, really tight ways of, you know, keeping it steady and so on. And maybe those that there will be a civilization sometime in the future of Fallout that does stick. Obviously, that's a big theme of post-apocalypse is eventually there will be, right? Uh, there will be something that comes after. Uh, oh, also, the theme. The Fallout theme playing whenever she picks Lucy picks up the New California Republic flag. I got chills, dude. I oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, and then we cut back to Howard. And we have I, I remember at the very beginning I was really funny. I was like, oh, the government? Who's the government now? Uh and it's government. Uh, G-O-V-R-M-I-N-T instead of M-E-N-T. It, I thought that was so so funny because <laughs> wastelanders are so stupid dog um and then we you know we get to a cool little interaction between uh the president of the government and everything and then we get to see him sewing on his finger and then the regeneration happens really quickly i thought that was really cool um and then we get to like the shootout scene and then i uh, see some stuff on Maldaver and everything like that and he was like that's not what she looked like last time. And immediately before even the very end of the episode, I was like, oh, she was a ghoul. Because he recognizes her as a ghoul, not as anything else. Um, <laughs> I have it really in, in big letters here. Uh, uh, that comes after. But I really liked how um, he used two single action navies to like shoot at those guys. I like Colt, uh, Colt single action navies. I think they look really cool. I'm more of a Dragoon guy myself, but I thought they looked cool. Um, and then they all start getting naked and in, uh, <laughs> in my notes here in really big letters, it goes tits, exclamation, 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 cock, exclamation, exclamation, and then beneath it cult. So there was that entire scene. I thought that was really interesting and it really did. Uh, cause we've seen cults before and vaults and I, and I'm glad that we get to see that again with the show again, rehashing uh, similar ideas that, people of the games will find recognizable but then also bringing it to a new audience uh oh yeah i'm pretty sure that like the reason why it's either a max is just really stupid and like he's like oh this isn't so bad or it's in the stuff that he's eating because he keeps eating it he like the entire scene he's eating it and it, there, there's attention being paid to it and obviously a lesser writer wouldn't would just be like oh he just likes it now but a more kind of nuanced writer would be like the camera is focusing on him eating it so it's because something he's eating is causing it uh i i thought um i thought it was really cool that the that there was the big fish the gulpers that was in the tank and then also the pregnant lady getting eaten and then the 
And then we get to see the cryo stuff of the pregnant people. <laughs> and Lucy fails her sneak skill. I thought that was really funny because she makes it. I remember I was writing down sneak skill. And I was waiting to see what happens. I go, failed dice roll. <laughs> so I thought that was really cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that that's really funny the whole like thing over like Lucy's being held back and she's like your whole culture is insane I just know that that's going to become a meme just like the appears to be a woman it, I, I don't know if they're doing this on purpose if so genius because you're making it sound good enough to be a meme and not forcing it uh, but if not what amazing dialogue to turn in I do want to go back to, before I end this review, and talk about what I was talking about earlier, where, yeah, Maldaver was apparently part of the, the meetings of the communists and everything like that, and uh, I know for a fact people are going to, like, use this like they did with um, with New Vegas, of being like, well, the legions are the good guys. New Vegas is saying that fascism is great. I, I can tell you already that what the show is going to be saying is like, yeah, Look at this cool, like, look at the stuff with communism. But then also having some new ones with Howard and so on, and the conflict with Howard and Maldaver as being people from the past, where they both fell from Greece, right? Like, she might have had great ideas, but, like, she ended up fucking turning into a ghoul and going crazy. And so on. Like, and now she's, like, a cult leader, and so on, like that. And you could also take in, maybe it's a reflection or critique of communism itself with cult of personalities and all that other stuff, but... Who knows? I mean, yeah, cult of personalities are weird. I don't think it's the best option. I don't think it's a good thing. But hey, if you got people out of poverty, <laughs> maybe move away from it after a while. Uh, but anyway, I, I, I really do like the show. I enjoy it a lot. I enjoy, despite how people mad, mad people are getting and being like, oh, this is such like leftist propaganda. It's so funny. Uh... I enjoy it. I really do. It's it's so Fallout. It really is. And I love it. I I love it to bits. I am loving everything that it's doing and so on. And uh, and I've talked about before on my channel how I don't like... I like to not be very bluntly political. Uh, but whenever I... When, if I wanted to talk about it, I'll talk about it. Um, I just don't... I just don't think I just need to talk about it all the time. So... But when it comes to Fallout, obviously, I will talk about the politics of Fallout and what it talks about. And because that's just a part of Fallout. Um, but yeah, other than that, thank you so much for watching. I will finish up the last two episodes tomorrow. And those will be the two videos up tomorrow. Click!